Out of all of the regions in the United States, the Rio Grande Valley of South Texas is one of the best places for birding. Situated in the most southern parts of the country, this area has garnered a reputation of being a must-visit location for those looking to have an amazing experience while adding a plethora of species to their life lists. With many people across the nation eyeing the Rio Grande Valley as a possible destination to spend their hard-earned vacation money, here are some things everyone should know about birding in the valley before making the trip. The rarities are there, but chasing them is different than you think. South Texas is well known for its avian rarities, boasting numerous visitors from Mexico and South America that can't be found anywhere else in the country, as well as individual birds serving as single-digit state or even national records. These birds are among the top attractions for both locals and visitors alike. Most birders who have been in the hobby for a while are familiar with rarity chases, and oftentimes, if the bird is being reported, it means you have a great chance of seeing it. This isn't necessarily the case in the Rio Grande Valley, however. Many of the best locations to look for birds are expansive, and birds such as bacards and warblers don't necessarily follow routines. These birds often go unreported for stretches of days at a time, or only reveal themselves for minutes at a time. For this reason, if someone reports a bird at a hot spot, chances are by the time you get there, the bird will have already moved on, even if it's been seen in the area for months, even if you're literally in the same park when the sighting occurs. We started calling this process of missing birds right after they were reported the South Texas Special. Keep in mind this isn't always the case, and some birds are actually easy to see. But a lot of times, the species that are most desirable are hard to find. Additionally, the sheer number of birders searching the area mean that they're reported most days, although in reality only a handful of people may have seen them out of hundreds looking. The difficulty of finding these rarities makes it even more rewarding when you finally do see them, however, but be prepared to have to make multiple trips to a park to see some of your target species, unless you have incredible luck. Joining communication channels is extremely useful. Due to the fleeting nature of a lot of sightings in the Rio Grande Valley, getting up-to-date information is extremely important. Fortunately, there are a few ways you can get reports about what's being seen and when. First, eBird is of course a great resource. With sightings from the valley logged on a regular basis, eBird is a great way to find out what's being seen in South Texas and a massive help when planning your days and deciding which spots you should visit. The problem with eBird, however, is that people don't always make eBird checklists right away, meaning you could miss out on a lot of sightings if it's the only thing you're using to see what's around. A better option for immediate information is the LRGV Visiting Birders group, in which birders both native and visiting the valley share pretty much up-to-date information and reports. This is a WhatsApp group, so if you don't have it on your phone, you'll need to download it in order to use it. And I would say joining it is definitely worth it, and almost necessary to maximize your time in the valley. The link to join is in the description below, but just a word of advice, there are rules to the group, and if you don't follow them you may get booted. You've been warned. It's safer than you might think. The Rio Grande Valley is right on the border of the United States and Mexico, and when I say right on the border, I mean you can literally see Mexico across the river from some of the hottest destinations in the region. When we tell people about our trips there, they often inquire about the dangers of spending time so close to Mexico, due to the negative associations with the border, largely due to many politically charged debates creating fear. People assume that the Rio Grande Valley is extremely dangerous. While I'm not saying that bad things can't and haven't happened in the region, up until this point, I've never felt in danger and have never felt threatened in any way or seen anything that could be considered sketchy in the valley. In fact, Many people in the area actually visit Mexico somewhat routinely for birding or other things such as dental work since it's less expensive there. I will however say that people have commented that it wouldn't be a great idea to wander around at night in a lot of these areas. And again, I'm not saying that bad things can't happen in this region, and you do need to take precautions the same as you would in any other part of the country, but it's not even close to as dangerous as many people assume it is. It's totally built for birding and ecotourism. Something unique about the Rio Grande Valley is that it's optimized for birders in a way that most other regions are not. In most places I've visited, including state parks, national parks, and nature centers in general, park staff are usually somewhat knowledgeable about what lives on their property, 
but aren't usually all that helpful in knowing the exact species and when they were last seen. This is not the case in the Rio Grande Valley. Park employees are typically extremely knowledgeable about what's on the property, and even the habits of some of the rarities. It's not just the employees, however, that make the region so well optimized. It's the very makeup of the parks, with photography blinds, feeding stations, and infographics all designed with birders and photographers in mind. Another thing that sets this region apart is the general connectedness of visiting birders, local birders, and guides. Through various communication platforms and general shared goals, it feels like every birder is a part of the same team when in the valley, and it's a really unique feeling that I've never had anywhere else in the country while birding. The region is not overhyped. The Rio Grande Valley gets a lot of attention as a marquee destination to go for birding in the United States. Having been to South Texas multiple times, I can firmly say that it is in fact one of the best places for birding that I have ever been to. The combination of amazing species that live in the valley year-round, the impressive amount of rarities that venture into the region, and the way that everything is set up to work for birders and ecotourists certainly make the Rio Grande Valley one of the best, if not the best places to go birding in North America. I will certainly be back to enjoy all that it has to offer again, and I would highly recommend this part of the country as an all-around incredible destination. It really does live up to the hype. Some other tips and suggestions for anyone who's looking to go to the Rio Grande Valley for the first time. Do a lot of research and planning before you go. Check eBird, check the other social groups to see what species are around that you'd most like to find, and then plan your days in the valley to maximize the time you have. Also, leave plenty of space to deviate from the plan if something interesting is reported that you weren't expecting. If you want to see what it's like birding in the valley, check out some of our videos on the region. We have a lot of them to pick from. Have you ever been to the Rio Grande Valley before? Or are you planning a trip? Let us know in the comments below and tell us if you recommend it to others. As always, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Badgerland Birding. Yeah.